Alrighty, what's up guys, Single Player Nacho here. Today we have a very creepy video planned. We have the origins and backstory of the hillbilly in Dead by Daylight. Disfigured, abandoned, and hidden away. This was the upbringing of Max Thompson Jr., a farm boy with various deformities. And because of these deformities, Max's parents were huge bullies, and that's really not cool. If you guys ever took a psychology class, you know where this story goes. Max would become extremely angry with his parents' treatment, and he would take out this anger on farm animals, dismembering them to bits. Max would use his two signature weapons, a hammer and a chainsaw, to dismember anything and everything he could. I'm supposed to describe Max's physical features, and this is really hard to do. There is an excess of skin that joins Max's right shoulder all the way across his face, and this excess of skin pushes Max's scalp backwards to set him up for a bunch of forehead jokes. He has this horse's mane on his back, kinda looks like a mullet. It probably could've worked in the 80s. His skin is tattered and meshed all over, but he is pretty damn ripped, I'll give Max Thompson that. This is all accompanied by freakish height and a very hunched back posture. Max Thompson Jr. is a work of art, but his story is far from anything artistic. It's very tragic and filled with violence. And it's a pretty damn satisfying revenge story as well. How did Max Thompson free himself from his parents' capture? And how many people fell victim to his chainsaw? It all begins in the Cold Wind Farm, located in the rural south in the early 1900s. This was around the time that farming was like a pretty big business, lots of money in it, and Max Thompson Sr. and Evelyn Thompson were both very rich because they owned the Cold Wind Farm. So Max Thompson Sr. and Evelyn Thompson might have been very wealthy, but this led them to be also very cold and disconnected from anything other than business. And that's when these crude and filthy rich people accidentally had a child. I say the word accidentally because this child was unwanted at birth. And it just so happens that this child was Max Thompson Jr., the hillbilly. Max's parents must have shrieked at the first sight of him because he was horribly disfigured. It was like adding insult to injury because not only did they not want this child, he was also very hideous to them. But even after all of that, Max Thompson Sr. still names Max Thompson Jr. after his own name. Kind of shows how much of an elitist prick this guy was at the very beginning. I wish I could tell you that it's just flowers and rainbows after this, but no. Max's parents brought him back to the Cold Wind Farm. He'd probably wish they never did because they treated him like an animal. If it wasn't the constant neglect from his mother, it was the emotional abuse his father would take out on him. He would constantly joke around about Max's deformities. Yeah, they were pretty big assholes, but they also only focused on their beloved business. And they saw Max as a possible impediment towards that business, so they sealed him off in a room, completely bricked the doorway to be hidden away from society. Cold, alone, and completely isolated, I can only imagine how horrible Max's childhood must have been. But his parents were at least a little bit thoughtful and they ripped a hole through the wall that was connected to Max's bricked off room. The hole was used to feed Max and I could just imagine the poor quality of the food, but also to continue the belittlement of this child. I genuinely wonder why Max Thompson Sr. and Evelyn Thompson did this. Was it to keep observing Max as some kind of museum attraction? Regardless, it's all screwed up anyway. After a couple of years of isolation, Max begins to develop strong features, big muscles, and a big build, and his father begins to take notice. One night, Max Thompson Sr. releases Max Thompson Jr. from his cell and takes him to the farm towards the cows, hands him a hammer, and says, Kill. Max Jr. was still a child at this point, and he had never taken anything's life. For some odd reason, he knew what to do. All of his bludgeoning strikes made Max feel satisfied, as his father watched in amusement and was filled with laughter. He had found his new killing tool. Max Jr. was only released to kill farm animals, and his father saw it as some kind of sick joke. He loved it. He loved watching this. Eventually, kill after kill, blood spatter everywhere. Max Jr. grew tired of the act. He didn't want to kill any more farm animals. He felt used and humiliated by his own father. It must have been a cold, frigid night when one of the most important events in Max Jr.'s life was coming. It was dark in his cell, so he knew it was nighttime, but still, he'd heard some laughter coming up the stairs. It was the voice of two gentlemen, and Max Jr. was instantly displeased. He knew it was the voices of his father and the police chief. And when both of these vile assholes were put together, they were even more abusive towards Max Jr. Come on, boy. Let's show these deputies your worth. 
the men stormed Max out of his cell and brought him towards the cattle. They all laughed and joked at his foul appearance, gave him the hammer, and wanted to see him killed. The strikes to the head to the first cow was hard enough for Max Jr., but his father pressured him to keep killing in front of policemen and the police chief, all for their amusement. Kill. That's what they love to watch him do. Kill. Worse yet, his father wouldn't even call him by his name, just called him boy. Max Jr. raised his hammer, but something grabbed at him. A bunch of pressure filled his body. He could no longer hear the voices laughing at him. He couldn't even see what was in front of him, just red. When Max Jr. came to, he did not hear the animal cries that he was used to, but instead, he heard a very familiar voice in deep, deep pain. In a blind rage, he killed and maimed all of the policemen and his father. All that was left were the gurgling sounds of his own father, who was butchered so hard he was incredibly close to death. Unfortunately, the police chief was the only one that survived the attack. You killed him. Your pa, Jim, Don, Ray, my men, my fucking men. He lunges at Max and takes away the hammer. Max storms out of the farm and towards the house, where his mother was left alone. Max breaks through the front door, and I don't know if he was looking for some sort of comfort from his mother. I don't know what he was looking for in that house. But the blind rage takes over again. He beats his mother to a bloody pulp, strangling her, picking her up, and throwing her all over the house, begging her to call him by his real name. Why? Why did you hate me? What did I do to make you both hate me so much? But Evelyn Thompson couldn't even understand the words that were coming out of her son's mouth. Her son that was actively murdering her. Because the hillbilly didn't know language, he only knew the language from television sets that were too far away. All he could hear were echoes of language. So all of his speech was completely inept. One final thrust towards the wall and Evelyn Thompson was pretty much dead. Her son had left her unrecognizable, filled with blood, but still. Max Jr. held a moment of appreciation for his mother. Even though she was beaten beyond all belief, he still thought that she was beautiful. Max closed in on his mother's eyes, her luscious blue eyes, and then he tore them out. And while he did this brutal act, he smiled for some reason. He didn't know why, but he felt joy. With both of his parents dead, Max was essentially free, at least in his mind. When bullets began wisping through the house, nearly hitting him, it was the police chief. Max runs towards the woods in the dead of night, and a large manhunt would begin. A manhunt with a sick twist. The chief knew a lot of personal details about Max Jr. The chief would taunt Max with details about his parents, even he didn't know details about his own past abuse. Your parents tried to kill you. Let a pot of boiling water spill over you. And told us you were a clumsy child. The chief reveals that it was him that convinced Max's father to have his son work as a farmhand. All of that needless bloodlust, all of that abuse, was almost entirely linked back to the chief of police. The chief barked all of these details towards the dark forest, knowing that Max was listening. Eventually Max escapes, and the chief is scratching his head, knowing that there is a killer on the loose. And this is where Max's revenge begins. Dead deputy after dead deputy, policeman after policeman, bodies began piling up, and the police chief knew it was Max. One of the more gorier kills during the hillbilly's escape was with a deputy he knew, one that had laughed at him too many times. He picks up the deputy and smashes him against the tree, over and over again, grabbing him tightly by the neck. He yells at the deputy, who's laughing now? Laugh now. Laugh. Laugh. The deputy's brain is leaking out of his head like a crushed watermelon. But instead of killing him right then and there, the hillbilly lets the deputy down. The deputy at this point is like a mindless zombie. He's just moving left and right. He can't even stand straight. The hillbilly is reminded of his old work of killing cattle. And at this point, he knows that if this was a cow, it was time to put it down. But he lets the deputy go, and the half-dead deputy walks towards the dark of the woods and eventually dies. And when the hillbilly hears this thud, he laughs. It must have felt very good to finally be able to fight back. More ruthless kills like this occurred, and the police chief was at his wit's end. He was losing a lot of men. With police dogs and a couple of deputies at his side, the chief finally tracks down the hillbilly. He's hardly known as Max Thompson Jr. now, or the boy they never respected. As yet another taunt, the chief tells Max, Boy, 
You wanna know your name. I knows it. Come out and I'll whisper it in your useless, mangled ear. Max makes short work of the deputies, and only the dogs and the chief are left alive. The hillbilly does this by successfully hiding in the dark of night, and the chief begs Max to come out. He says, Your pa gave you a name before he realized you were a crooked freak of fucking nature. Your name shames him. That's why he hides you. You want to know your name. Come out with your hands up and I'll tell you. The hillbilly, at a moment of pure strength, yells out, I have a name. And a struggle ensues between him, the dogs, and the police chief. The chief pulls out a knife, but the boy's strength is too much to handle. The hillbilly grabs the chief's hand that wields the knife and makes the chief stab himself in the guts. He screams at the chief's face. See my worth now, chief. See my worth. The hillbilly grabs his trusty old hammer and finishes the job. His ultimate enemy was dead. All of his enemies were dead. His father, his mother, a bunch of deputies, and now the chief of police. Finally, a tiny victory after a very sadistic upbringing. The hillbilly would pick up the chief's body and all the other deputies and the dogs. He headed back home, the only home he knew, which was the Cold Wind Farm. And on his walk back, he thought to himself, you know what? Pa did have a lot of money. I wonder where he keeps it. Gotta look everywhere. Get myself a nice TV, relax. But before he did any of this, he thought to himself, I'm hungry, and cooked himself some prized bacon. The bacon, made out of the flesh of his own mother, father, the deputies, and the police chief. There are differing accounts of what happened next in the hillbilly's life. Some say that he decided to keep killing the cattle found in the cold wind farm, brutally massacring anything that lived. He'd pick up some hitchhikers there, some visitors here. His bloodlust knew no end. Eventually, people started noticing that there was no meat being shipped from the cold wind farm. And there was a formal investigation in the 1970s, and dozens and dozens of bodies were recovered. Even the bodies of the Thompsons, who just loved and loved their beloved farm. None of that love ever reached their only son. At this point, I'd imagine that the entity caught a grip of the hillbilly, and that's why they never found him at the farm. For decades, people tried to renovate the Cold Wind Farm after all of the brutal massacres that occurred there. But the walls were rotten, and the stench never dissipated. Who knows what it was that kept people away? Was it the murders, or the echoing chainsaw sounds that were still heard to this day? Yeah, that's a pretty brutal tale, but the Thompsons did get what was coming to them. And now let's look at some trivia and some items that will paint a better picture for the hillbilly's backstory. First up, we have Dad's boots. Now this is a pair of Max Thompson Sr.'s boots that were pulled off of his corpse. It's probably insignificant, still interesting that the hillbilly kept his dad's boots, but also goes to show how good he is at his job, which is, uh, you know, skinning people alive completely removes all of the clothing items. Next up, we have Mother's Helpers. These are caffeine pills that actually belong to Evelyn Thompson, the hillbilly's mother. It's very interesting that they decided to include this. Might give us some insight into Evelyn's mind state. Side effects include nervousness and irritability. And the little quotation says, Doctor, please, more of these. Evelyn Thompson. I wonder what Evelyn was actually going through and if this medication had anything to do with the fact that she treated her son with the utmost disrespect. I mean, she also tried to drown him, so that's pretty bad too. Next up, we have the pig house gloves. These are very disgusting smelling gloves that belong to Max Thompson Sr. Now the pig house gloves apparently are very thick Quotation says, Ain't no mess can stain a hard working man's soul. Max Thompson Sr. What a dick. This just goes to show how much of a hard working lunatic this guy was. He was like a functioning psycho. And last but not least, we have the iridescent brick. This is probably the saddest item in the hillbilly's inventory. It says, Once representative of Max Jr.'s confinement, this was the first brick to fall when his room's barricade came crashing down. The quotation says, What kind of ruckus you stirring, boy? Max Thompson Sr. So as you would imagine, the hillbilly definitely put up a fight and tried to struggle his way out of his cell, breaking things probably, causing a ruckus in the night, causing all kinds of noises. It's really sad, but the iridescent brick reminds you of the horrible captivity that Max Jr. had to go through. So the final thoughts on the hillbilly as a whole character. 
wow. I read all of the tome stuff, the lore stuff, his backstory, and it's just very gruesome overall. The experiences that this character suffered through make sense that he would kill and slaughter a bunch of deputies. I think the most interesting thing to note here is Evelyn Thompson's death, how the hillbilly took his mother's eyes out of her own sockets and kept them. What's up with that? <laughs> I do think that the Thompsons did keep the hillbilly around just for amusement to sort of lay off all the stress from work and they took it out completely on this poor child that would just happen to be disfigured. The saddest part of all of it is that they didn't even want him. They didn't plan to have a child. So instead of, you know, atoning for their own sin, I guess at that time it was like a big sin to have a child out of wedlock or not wanting it, they tortured him. Like, what kind of mentality is behind that? Ooh, the Thompsons were really, really bad people. I even think that Max Thompson Sr., the father, was cutting a corner by employing his son as a killing tool. I mean, that's what he referred to him as, besides boy. And they kept calling him boy and boy and not by his real name. At that point, it's pretty obvious that the parents just disowned him and stopped calling him Max Thompson. He just wasn't worthy for their name. They're stupid stupid name. So what did you guys think of the hillbilly's backstory? Was it tragic? Did it make you feel good when he killed his parents? I know <laughs> you're not supposed to feel good, but I did. Leave a comment down below for your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe for more horror mysteries and lore. If you have a moment, check out the second channel. Link will be in the description. I do random stuff, random games, random horror games. Check it out. Again, thank you for watching this video. Have an awesome rest of your day, and as always, stay single.